Hi, my name is Annette. I work here at Lower Lights, and I'm going to talk to you today about breastfeeding, safe sleep, and formula feeding. Um, so breastfeeding, um, at the end of this, there will be a link um, you can click on and get all the documents that I'm referring to today. Um, so breastfeeding is knowledge is power. So if you um, have a lot of support, that is the best thing. Um, everybody needs help with breastfeeding, whether it be someone taking care of um, the rest of life while you breastfeed, um, or other children, or making your dinner. Everybody needs help. So before you have your baby, if you kind of think in your head, who can help me? Who is supporting me during all this? Um, whether it's friends, there's WIC, they have counselors there. We have help here. I would help anybody that came in and ask for me by name. Um, there's lots of peer support groups you can join the where you can talk to other mothers and kind of be like, you know, this is happening to me. Is this normal? Can you help me? Did you go through this? Um, so, um, so breastfeeding basically begins before you have your baby. Um, learning everything you can, being a good advocate, having your knowledge base, about breastfeeding and um, you know what is needed right after the baby comes. So there's um, some things, tips for feeding in the delivery room. So right after you have your baby, right after your baby comes out, they're gonna put that baby skin to skin. And for the first two hours of life, that baby is wide awake and actually rooting on its hands. It's awake, its mouth is open, and it will find your breast. Um, without problems. Um, it's, you know, that after that two hour awake alertness goes away when they're sleeping for 24 hours, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, so skin to skin um, helps regulate your body, your baby's temperature. It helps regulate your um, baby's heart rate and his breathing, him, he or she's breathing, um, and it's routine. Every hospital in Columbus is going to put your baby skin to skin. Even if you have a C-section, you know, they're going to take you to the recovery room with your baby skin to skin. Um, and while your baby is nestled there between your breasts, let them nurse as much as they want. If they want to nurse just a little bit, that's fine. If they want to nurse the whole two hours, that's fine too. Um, so just kind of um, begin breastfeeding within the first hour. Um, your baby needs to breastfeed eight to 12 times a day, and they kind of have their own schedule. I know hospitals um, won't let them go more than six hours without doing a blood sugar, which is just their protocol. Um, but the more the baby breastfeeds, if you can um, kind of watch the skin to skin, that baby will breastfeed more often than if it's just wrapped up in its bassinet. Um, um, so your baby will know your scent. It'll know your voice. Um, try to, and most hospitals also do this, delay the bath for 24 hours. Um, so bathing a child, a newborn, is just strenuous for them. They um, get worn out, they're crying, they're not happy and they just kind of go into this deep sleep after you do something like that to them. So the best thing to do is just let them good, get a good breastfeeding pattern established and then at the 24 hour mark you can actually bathe them if you want to. You don't really have to bathe them even at the 24 hour mark if you're not breastfeeding effectively and well. Um, so there are some reasons, to, medical reasons to supplement a baby. Um, jaundice, they will check your baby for jaundice every 24 hours um, and they will weigh your baby also and if you have even bottle fed formula babies um, lose weight. It's just natural to lose weight after um, you're born. So, but greater, they put it on a scale, so greater than 10% they um, become concerned that you're not getting enough. So they'll usually draw some lab work to see if you're dehydrated, the baby. Um, so those are reasons that they may ask, the pediatrician may ask you to supplement. And you can, if you're against, you can supplement with formula, but I would definitely limit it. Um, formula comes out of a, a bottle very fast and it, it doesn't take a lot of work to get it. So. 
I would do 10 mLs, and I wouldn't put a whole two ounce bottle in that baby's mouth. I would take out the five to 10 mLs and feed it to the baby. Also, if you're against them having a bottle nipple in their mouth, like you don't want that pacifier or a bottle nipple, you don't want that foreign nipple in their mouth, you only want yours, they can syringe feed your baby just the same to get that volume. And they won't have to have that um, nipple if you're against that. Um, so the baby's second day, um, so the first day they're very sleepy and you kind of got to wake them up. Um, the second day they're more awake. They have kind of come out of that deep sleepy phase that, you know, they were exhausted from being born too and they are wanting to eat. And this is kind of when moms feel like, I don't have enough milk. They're eating every hour, what's wrong? My baby's starving. And that's not the case. Your baby is just figuring out what's what, and um, your baby will, will, be want, will want to be on the breast all the time. And they may quickly fall asleep on the breast. Um, but if you just keep them skin to skin, and there's things you can do to make them eat more um, at each session, you know, Take them down to a diaper. They don't really like um, being unswaddled. And that kind of keeps them more alert and awake and they'll eat more effectively. Um, so unfortunately, the timing of a baby wanting to eat more is you're exhausted. So if, you know, as long as someone has eyes on that baby, mom needs to nap when the baby naps. So if baby is getting some decent sleep or baby just wants to be skin to skin, as long as somebody has eyes on mom and baby, the baby's not gonna go anywhere and not gonna fall. Um, so just, you know, put pillows on both sides of you, kind of recline a little bit, put the baby on you with a blanket, and just you and baby take a good long nap and let dad watch you and the baby to make sure everybody's safe. Um, Definitely skin to skin is the key to a lot of breastfeeding um, problems. Frequent nursing is key to an abundant milk supply. So what you're telling your body is, I need to make milk every two hours because this baby's eating every two hours. If you skip a feeding, um, say you, know, you want a breast and bottle, and you're just tired, you're not gonna nurse this kid every two hours, I wanna sleep. Um, take your nap when the baby naps, but if you skip a feeding and give a bottle, remember to try to pump. Um, if you don't pump, what you're telling your body is, I don't need to make milk. So let's say you breastfed at one o'clock, you bottle fed at three o'clock, and you breastfed again at five o'clock. So what you're telling your body is, I only need to make milk at one and at five. So you just went all those hours without telling your body to make milk during that time. So at least if you do bottle feed um, and skip a feeding, try to pump at that time and all the hospitals will give you a pump. Um, the pump parts that they give you are usually interchangeable with your home pump um, in some way. So they, the hospital will throw those parts away when you leave. So if you um, have a pump in your room at the hospital, all the tubing and the parts that came with it, just take them home with you when you go. Um, they're not going to reuse those. Um, so if you're taking good naps and you have lots of help, you have somebody else making your meals for you so you can rest, um, going home with a breastfeeding new baby is not the time to try to clean anything or do anything extra. <laughs> Um, it's the time to rest and have somebody else doing that stuff for you. So try to plan that stuff ahead of time. Um, so um, I have a baby doll here. I'm going to show you. A lot of people see, you know, um, people nursing like this. This is an older baby who knows how to nurse and doesn't need you to hold its head or your breast for them. Um, so a football hold was you tuck their feet behind there, take their neck, make a U with your hand, and put around their neck. You can control their head that way. Um, you want to take this hand, cup your breast, make a sandwich out of your nipple, and pull the baby this way. This is 
the best way for mom to see because she can see straight down and not um, lose any sight with the baby being smashed in her breast. If you hold the baby's head here and push the baby in, you're pushing the nose in. Hang on, I went dark. There we go. Um, you're pushing the nose into your breast and the baby can't, can't nurse that way. It needs to come in chin first. So you're going to bring the shoulder blades in so it's in chin first. And I'll show you another um, prop that I'll show you how that works. The other way is cross cradle. And you're going to go across your abdomen, um, hold the baby's neck the same way. And you're going to cup your breast with this hand and bring the baby in this way. Um, football, if you have a C-section, your belly hurts, you don't want that baby on your belly, the baby's off to the side. So that usually works better. Um, so this is my nipple. This is the mouth. So if you push on the back of the head and the head comes in like this, you're actually on the top of the nipple and it can't make a seal because this chin is not making a seal. So if you're pushing on the shoulder blades and the mouth comes in like this, then you can make a better seal. So that's why you don't want to push on the back of his head and push his face into your breast, nose first. You want to come in chin first with the baby. Um, also, this has a tongue tie. And if you have a baby that's tongue tied, it means he can't, the webbing underneath his tongue is to the tip of his tongue. He can't stick his tongue out. He's not going to be able to lick an ice cream um, if that helps you visualize that. So he's tongue tied. So if you notice your baby is tongue tied when he's crying, he's not sticking his tongue out and it's attached to that webbing. They can snip that so easy in the hospital. It's not a drop of blood, does not hurt them at all. Because what happens with your breast is if he's tongue tied and he can't get that tongue up, he's smashing the breast. And usually the breast comes out smashed and it's kind of painful sometimes. And he can't effectively get milk. Um, the dark part of your nipple, if we want that baby to latch deep, we want this part of the nipple at the roof, and we want that baby to latch deep, so he's way back here. If he's only getting the tip, he's not getting a lot of milk. Your milk ducts are back here. Um, so when you bring your baby in chin first, you want to Put, point that nipple towards the roof of the mouth and then bring the head in and pull all of that in. If he can't stick out his tongue, he can't suck that tissue into his mouth. Um, so some babies are effective breastfeeders tongue-tied, some are not. Um, it's just something to look for if you're having pain. Um, if, it's, if it's pinching and not a good latch, you, you feel like you're uncomfortable, just stick your finger in the baby's mouth, unlatch, and try again for a deeper latch. But come in chin first, point that nipple to the roof of the mouth, bring in the top, and he'll form a seal. Um, and just look for that tongue tie. Um, the first milk that we get is called colostrum. Um, it is thick. It's a little bit like syrup. Um, it has um, a high level of carotene. It's vitamin A. It's low in fat and high in protein, and it's easy to digest for the babies. So when they get that colostrum, it's digested very fast because it's perfect for them, and it's made for them, um, and it just doesn't stay in their system very long, so they are hungry more often. Um, colostrum is your body's way of giving your baby the proteins, vitamins, and minerals, and antibodies that protect your newborn from bacteria and viruses. Colostrum also acts as a laxative to help your baby expel the tar-like first stools, or meconium, um, which is called meconium. The elimination of meconium helps reduce your baby's risk of jaundice. So the more you feed your baby, the more he's going to poop, the less jaundice he can be. Um, as early as the second trimester, colostrum may begin to form in your breast. So it's already there when your second trimester. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll turn my phone off. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so that colostrum is already there. 
um, the CDC has, and you can print this off this link too, um, human milk storage guidelines. Um, so anything you pump, if you don't feed it to the baby, you can definitely store it. Um, human milk is room temperature safe for up to four hours. So if your baby is sleeping, you're feeling a little uncomfortable, you can pump and um, feed that to your baby. You can store it for later for if you have to go somewhere and baby may need some milk. Um, it's good in a deep freeze for six to 12 months. So you can easily, um, you know, feed and pump and um, do both. And he, your baby can always get human milk if, um, if that's your goal. Um, breast engorgement um, is when your milk, they say, comes in. Um, so two to five days after you deliver, your breasts get engorged. They feel really full. It's very uncomfortable. Um, it's a natural, normal process. There's nothing wrong. Um, keep your baby actively nursing throughout the feeding to try to empty your breasts. Try to empty both breasts. Don't skip feedings um, or give far formula during the first several weeks. Um, like I said, depending on what your goal is. Here at Lower Lights, we want to support whatever you want. If you want to solely breastfeed, we will help you do that. If you want to do both, that's fine. If you want to bottle feed, we'll help you do that too. This is your decision. Um, so to get your breast to effectively empty better, you need um, to put like warm compresses on your breast before you feed and it will um, help your milk let down and emptily, effectively empty. Um, there's some on the paper about breast engorgement. Down here, there is a link. You can watch videos um, about um, engorgement and they have lots of ideas like putting um, cool things on there for comfort. Um, for extreme engorgement, if you're extremely uncomfortable, there's a link over here that's also a video. But like I said, it's a normal process um, and it will go away. Um, uh, I'll just read this. It sounds like a lot, but your baby needs your milk and your breasts need to stimulate to bring in an abundant supply. Um, try to wake your baby up well. If your baby wakes up usually a couple days old they start doing their own thing and they'll cue you that they're hungry um, but if your baby's sleepy and it's been a while since they've nursed you can undress them down to the diaper um, rub their tummy and back talk to them um, once their eyes are open you know and they're actively opening their mouth working their tongue you know rooting on their hands they're good to go they'll, they'll uh, latch for you um, you'll hear a lot about baby led latching, and that's just basically um, putting your baby in the vicinity of your breast and letting them do it themselves instead of, instead of trying to force them. Um, but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So to how, how you can know that you're getting, uh, that your baby's getting enough um, is there's the first day they just need to pee once and poop once. The second day they need to pee twice and poop twice and so on. Um, your baby is, is um, not losing more than 10%. The hospital will update you on that. Um, they seem content between feedings and between feedings is kind of um, led by the baby. If you think, oh, he just nursed an hour ago, there's no way he's hungry. Well, he is, and it's okay. Um, he did sleep a little bit, and it's okay that he wants to nurse again. As they get older, they will get more of a routine. Um, babies go through growth spurts, and they just want to nurse more often during that time. Or it can be for comfort, which is fine, too, when they get older. Um, but 8 to 12 times a day, you can sometimes hear them swallow when they're nursing effectively, and they'll take longer sucks, longer, slower sucks um, to pull that milk out. Um, so there's, I also have this on the website um, that you'll be able to download if you would like. Um, so they also send you home with ibuprofen after a delivery. Ibuprofen um, 
acts in many different ways. The ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory, so um, it also helps your pain, but you have swollen feet, you, your breasts are now engorged, so take your ibuprofen. They usually give 600 every six hours, so definitely continue to take that um, while you're engorged, and that should help too. Um, you can also, during the engorgement phase, when you put the warm compresses on and your baby latches on, you can kind of take your breasts and massage your breast to kind of um, help the milk come out and be more effective with um, emptying your breasts. So I have a breastfeeding mom survival guide for the first two weeks. Um, you can definitely um, download this, Sleep When Your Baby Sleeps. I can't stress that enough. Um, and in a couple weeks, you will get a routine with your baby. You'll learn his cries, and you'll know what he needs, and um, you'll go with the flow, learn your baby's natural rhythm, and uh, schedules, like I said, don't tend to work with breastfed babies. So if you find that you're, you're needing to increase your milk supply, maybe you are breast in bottle, and some of those bottles have just really tanked your milk supply, um, you can increase your milk supply. It's a little bit of an effort. You need to actually direct breastfeed or pump more often um, and consistently do it. Um, if your baby is one of those babies that sleeps all night, you may have to get up and pump in the middle of the night um, or offer your baby the breast at night. If you are sleeping through the night and someone else is bottling your baby, maybe that's why your milk supply went down. Your body doesn't know that your baby's eating a bottle somewhere else. So you may have to um, pump during that time. Um, avoid these things. They reduce milk supply, smoking. Um, if I say birth control pills or injections, um, if you have established a good milk supply and you go to your four to six week postpartum check and you're breastfeeding beautifully and everything is fine, don't worry, the birth control and injections for birth control, that is when you need to get it um, at that time. Um, severe weight loss, also this is not a time to diet. You need about 500 extra calories a day to make milk for your baby, so definitely um, this is not a time to lose weight. Um, so you can also, if you have retained placenta, um, you would know kind of quickly, you'll keep bleeding, but that can inhibit your milk supply too. And if that does happen, just talk to the lactation nurse um, about that that happened to you and you wanna help. Um, try to reduce stress in your activity, increase your fluids, eat nutritious meals, continue to take your prenatal vitamins, increase your skin to skin, do skin to skin while you're pumping, um, take a warm bath, read, meditate, empty your mind of tasks, um, you need to just relax and you and your baby get in your own groove. Um, so that is all I have with breastfeeding. So I will move on to formula feeding. Um, so the CDC puts out a nice handout, um, how to prepare powdered formula. There is um, ready to feed formula and that's what the hospitals have. And um, anything that you like at the hospital, pads, um, ice packs, creams, lotions, they'll give you lanolin for your nipples, and you want more, just ask for extra to take home, and they can give you that. Um, anything left in your crib, other than linens, they will reuse those, but the diapers, the wipes, the nipples, anything, they will, um, you can take those home too. They're not going to reuse them. So when you get your can of formula, um, most WIC does give out powdered. There is ready to feed, it's kind of expensive, and then there is like a, um, a concentrate that you can just add water to, and that's a little more expensive too. Um, but you wanna check the expiration date, make sure it's not expired, it's in good condition. The container doesn't look um, you know, dented, open, tampered with at all. Um, tap water is usually safe. Sometimes there are water alerts and you need to boil your water. 
and um, usually that's on the news. Um, use the exact amount of water. So always measure the water first. So if you have a four ounce bottle and you want um, four ounces of formula, you need to add four ounces of water. Because um, when you add the powder behind it, it's gonna distribute that and make it seem like more, um, but it's really not. You still want the four ounces of liquid. Um, never dilute formula by adding extra water. Um, this can make your baby very sick and mess up his electrolytes. So you, um, the formula cans come with scoops. You want to tap it and cut it off at the top with the side of the can um, to make sure you have the exact, the full scoop, but not heaping. Um, so put your four ounces of water in. Usually it's one scoop per two ounces of water, but read the directions on your container to make sure. Um, add your two scoops of formula and shake. Put a nipple on it and shake. Um, you don't really have to warm it up. Some babies, I think, get used to warm milk and like it, and that's fine, um, but you don't have to. Room temperature is fine. Um, so formula, use prepared infant formula within one hour of the start of feeding and within two hours of preparation. If you're not gonna use the prepared formula within two hours, immediately store the bottle in the fridge and it's good for up to 24 hours. Throw out any infant formula that's left in the bottle after feeding your baby. Don't refrigerate it to save it for later. The combination of infant formula and your baby's saliva can cause bacteria to grow. Um, always hold the baby's bottle for the baby, especially when they're new, and your baby while feeding them. You don't want to prop a bottle. You don't want to put the baby in the crib on its side and prop the baby bottle. They will choke. and That can go down their lungs and create problems. Um, so always hold your baby kind of at an upright angle and give the baby the bottle. I usually about, you'll learn how often your baby needs to burp, but every ounce or two, your baby will slow down and then you can burp your baby and then go back to feeding. Um, and that's really all I have for formula feeding. Um, safe sleep is my last topic. And I have this handout you can download um, at the end of it. But basically safe sleep is ABC. Um, your baby is alone. A, in its own crib, or on its back, and in its own crib, so A, B, C. So um, this, there's a baby here with his arms above his head. He's not swaddled tight. He's not propped up in any way. He is just sleeping peacefully on his back. And that's how we want our babies to be. We don't want big blankets, um, stuffed animals, pillows, anything in that baby crib. They can get their face up against that and smother. Um, we don't Infants should share a room with their parents, but not the same sleeping surface. Um, preferably until the baby turns one, but at least for the first six months, you want to hear your baby in that room. And your baby needs to hear you too and know that you're close by. Um, room sharing decreases the, the risk of SIDS as much as 50%. Breastfeeding also reduces the risk of SIDS. Um, Infants should never be left alone to sleep on sofas, armchairs, or any sitting device. Um, every year, 3,500 babies die from sleeping on the wrong type of surface, and they smother. Franklin County um, is exceptionally bad. Um, we have three babies die before their first birthday every week. Um, they put that out for Franklin County. So. It is definitely something to learn, something to think about, and whoever um, watches your child, you need to go over that with them as well. If grandma has the baby or the baby goes to a babysitter, you need to make sure they practice that safe sleep too. Um, you just don't want anyone, you know, putting your baby at risk. Um, this is all I have. Um, thank you for listening and knowledge is power, so good luck.